The echoes of history reverberate in the present, haunting the lives of the Filipino people, particularly the youth. The wounds of past injustices run deep, and the call for transitional justice resounds louder than ever. As political science students, we immerse ourselves in the rich tapestry of our nation's history. We witness the indomitable spirit of our ancestors who fought for freedom, justice, and dignity. The struggles they endured continue to shape our reality today. The quest for truth and justice is not a matter of legal procedures. It is a profound journey to heal the wounds of our past. Transitional justice is not merely an academic concept for us. It is a responsibility we bear as Filipinos to confront the dark chapters of our own history with courage and compassion. We cannot afford to be complacent for silence perpetrates the chains of the past. We stand at a crucial juncture where the pursuit of justice and healing can break these chains, allowing us to embrace a brighter future. In the hallowed halls of learning and on the streets where dreams converge, the Filipino youth stand united. They are vanguards of change, the architects of a brighter tomorrow. Now let's hear from some of these inspiring young minds as they share their motivations for getting involved in the pursuit of political change. For a long time, there has been this narrative or discourse that significant political change is impossible in the Philippines. This has been something I previously grappled with when I had not joined a youth political organization. I was in a constant tension between being apolitical or continuing to exert effort to understand why change is so slow or negligible. This view changed, however, when I joined a national democratic organization called Anakbayan. They have firm principles and concrete measures in place on how to usher political change. As long as it is tightly connected with the well-being and political struggle of the people or masses. The organization also thoroughly and continually studies Philippine society to better understand how to serve the people and resolve their demands. In my case, why change is elusive alongside the solution to surpass it. So what really motivated me in the pursuit and development of my activism is a newfound faith in knowing there is a way that solves society ills by knowing its roots or causes. Because of this, I now have a framework which is the mass line in viewing possible path for social change alongside a strong belief in this framework. The change is indeed possible as long as we remain steadfast and diligent in establishing a foundation to this painstaking process. Human rights violations, especially those that center to violent suppression of political criticisms, protests, and clamors. Though if I were to move into a different sector, migration and Filipino diaspora is another issue I am keen to participate in. The youth has a continuous surge of vigor and potential dedication to contribute to a given social movement if they are instilled with proper principles and critical thinking centered on the well-being of the majority of toiling Filipinos. There are already numerous historical experiences where the youth is found offering their whole lives in genuine service of the country's prosperity such as Andres Bonifacio and his comrades, broad-based protests like the First Quarter Storm and the Liman Commune. The youth's energy could be a vital source of strength and consolidation in any social movement because they organize themselves into radical associations, society groups, circles, and collectives that serve as a vanguard and safe space for activism, political, action, social change, as long as their will is interconnected to the majority of ma marginalized people. There are several like parental restriction, the need for daily interaction and socialization, public speaking, diligent studying refinement practice, continuous discipline improvement of mind and body, even threats of state violence. However, the most challenging obstacle that I have ever faced, even if I had already resolved it, yet still continually resurfaces, is the array of self-doubts to move forward. This always burdened me on top of other problems. Why should I still continue to pursue my path of activism amidst difficulties if I could just leave it and have a comfortable life? The answer, even if you have to constantly redo this, lies in self-remolding development and the acceptance that this cycle of surpassing your problems and then getting a new one is part of the activism that I have chosen. It is at most crucial that an activist will become decisive to always move forward and struggle with the people. 
even if there are threats of so or if campaign victory is achieved so as to guarantee perpetual social progress. A real opportunity to bring actual drastic change to the lives of the exploited Filipino masses. Personally, I cannot name one particular experience or moment that motivated me into becoming an activist per se. It was more about this constant struggle that an individual suffers through due to long-standing systematic ills in our country. First is on agriculture, landlessness of a huge majority of Filipino farmers and peasants, land grabbing by traditional political or economic elites in the countryside, low production due to individual and unindustrialized means of farming. Second is on labor, and or contractualization, poor working conditions of workers, slave wages, union busting, jeepney phase out, and of course great lack of national industrialization in the Philippines. Third is the youth. The CCAD characteristic of Philippine education system or the colonial commercialized anti-democratic education that serves the interests of hiring imperialist countries through an en masse export labor, budget cuts in the SUCs or state universities and college, TOFI for private and acad academic institutions, and MROTCU, turn CCAD PH education and SMO. The fourth is on imperialism, state violence, and others. MROTC, VFA, ed, EDCA, Chinese takeover of Philippine Islands, red tagging, McCarthyism, and Marcos Duterte fascism. Sabi nga nung dalawang magkibang tao, the revolution is not a dinner party, and the revolution will not be televised. Why state this quote? Because as Losalians and as individuals part of the youth sector, Kinakailangan ng tunay na paglubog sa masa if we really want to enact change. Ang impact, hindi magagawa kailanman kung tayong kabataan ay nakakulong sa apat na sulok ng ating silidaranan. Alamin natin ang mga sagot sa mga panlipo ng suliranin ay makakamit lamang sa pamamagitan sa pakikibaka kasama ang masa. Knowing that, get organized! History proves that collective, ac collective action is always stronger than individual effort. Furthermore, strive for proletarianization. At the end of the day, the youth can contribute and change the country in many different ways. The more crucial thing to remember and ask is, to whose interest do I serve? Is it for toiling masses? Or is it for the explo exploitative ruling few? Red tagging, state-funded trolls, and other reactionary entities ensure that political dissent is always to kept to a minimum. This is done through various ways, attacks on social media, PNP and AFP intervention, use of anti-terror law to press trumped up charges to union organizers, activists, IPs, media journalists, and many more. As a member of Anakbayan Vito Cruz, campaigns of anti-red tagging policy together with the USG and other organizations were achieved. But the primary means of overcoming red tagging is really through constant political struggle by holding them accountable for their erroneous and dangerous actions. Stigma and misinformation activism in Philippine contexts. Philippi political activists are perceived by the most of those puro rally lang ang alam niyan or kumikita yan sa kakarali. Common sentiments aside from those that state that activists or activisms equate to being terrorists, NPA, or armed combatants. Given how well-oiled or well-founded state apparatus and machineries are, it must be not it must not be surprising that perception and activism remains superficial at the very least, or really misinformed and misguided at the very worst, all due to lack of propaganda of course. The truth is, an activist participates in trade union, organizing GPT strikes, basic mass integra integrations or BMIs, polit constant political education and many other not constrained to rallying. To overcome this is a real matter. It's really a matter of consistent political education, dialogues, and solid integration with the broad masses to demystify common stereotypes or misconceptions on activisms in the Philippines. I made an article about the pessimistic effect of female discrimination. It shows the unequally and disadvantageously of empowered women in their workplace based on the novel Pride and Prejudice. On that novel, women or females are constantly seen as subordinate gender as we see the belief socially and politically for equality of women. It aims to create a society fair and equitative of women's rights 
In recent years, it has become an important social movement that shows a fighting against the inequality and discrimination of gender and as a theory that focuses on different ways that women and men treated in society. It is not just about women's rights, but also individual women's rights. It inspires me to have a better future for our society and require that all people be assured a minimum level of participation in the community. As a student, social justice and education include more empathy, more justice, and more equivalence to ensure the people who are ultimately susceptible to it are minorities and oppressed social groups, comprehend people formerly suffering from poverty and ethnic minorities. As an aspiring sports journalist student, your sovereign responsibility as a journalist is to attain truth and accuracy in your reporting. Verify data from multiple sources and fact-check thoroughly before publishing any story. Building a positive concussion through journalism may not happen overnight. It takes time, adhesion, and continuance. Don't be discouraged by contest. Keep pushing forward and enhance your skills. Journalism is an elaborate field. Stay informed about the latest progression in media, technology, and storytelling techniques. Attend workshops, assembly, and networking events to learn from experienced professionals. As a fellow Learning Kiko volunteer in our hometown in Abra, my motivation to get involved in political change and advocacy work stems from a deep desire to positively impact the lives of the people in our community and beyond. I believe that through political engagement and advocacy, we can bring about meaningful change, address pressing issues, and uplift society's marginalized and underserved sectors. One community project I've been proud to participate in is the Free Logo Program during the elections period. This initiative aimed to provide free food to those in need, especially when families may struggle economically. By offering something as essential as food, we were able to elevate some of the hardship faced by our fellow citizens and demonstrate the power of community support. Another significant initiative was organizing a donation drive to be sent to Isabella and Cagayan during Typhoon Elysis in 2020. This disaster relief effort brought much-needed aid to the affected communities and showcased the compassion and unity of our people during times of crisis. To engage and mobilize the Filipino youth in community, organizing and social initiatives, I believe in the power of education and inspiration. We can conduct workshops, seminars, and awareness campaigns in schools and universities to inform the youth about pressing social issues and encourage them to find solutions proactively. Sharing success stories and the impact of community projects can also inspire young individuals to get involved and contribute to meaningful causes. The role of the Filipino youth in shaping the political landscape is crucial. They represent the future of our nation and possess the energy, creativity, and ideals needed to drive positive change. By actively participating in community organizing and social initiatives, young people like me can voice their concerns, advocate for their needs, and push for policies that promote equity, justice, and sustainable development. The path to a just society begins with us, the youth. We have the power to break chains, to heal, and to build the Philippines that embrace all its people. Let this short film serve as a call to action. A reminder that we are the change makers and together we can create a nation we can be proud of.